Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to Morning Prayer for the morning of Friday, December the 6th. And this is the feast day of St. Nicholas of Myra. And, you know, we don't keep all of the minor feast days, but there are a few during the year that we just always keep. And St. Nicholas is, is, of course, one of them for this time of year. So we've got a lot to talk about him, but first, we're praying today for peace on earth, we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, and we're praying for peace and unity in our own country. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Kivu and the Iglesia Anglican de Rwanda. And in our own diocese this week, we're praying for St. Nicholas's in Bolverde and the Church of the Advent in Alice. We pray for Sean, our presiding bishop, for David, our bishop, for Angela, our bishop suffragan elect, and for Mike and Allie, our priests. And as always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about St. Nicholas. And I've got my notes right here. So first of all, St. Nicholas, oh, what do we know about him and what do we not really know about him? And the answer to what do we know for sure about him is almost practically nothing. Um, he was around the late third, our late fourth century into the early part of the fifth century. Um, he was probably born somewhere around Myra, maybe not exactly in Myra. And that is currently, today it's part of uh, Turkey. So he is the patron saint of, uh, and uh, I have to write the list because there are so many, so many folks that he is the patron saint of. Sailors, merchants, repentant thieves, children, brewers, pawnbrokers, toy makers, unmarried people, and students. That's a lot to be a patron saint of. He must be very, very busy. And there are some interesting stories as to how he became patron saint of all of these folks. So the, the idea of giving, and then of course, he's sort of the patron saint of those who give, gift and see, give gifts in secret. And this is where the whole thing of how he became identified with giving gifts around this time of year. Both Saint Nicholas and of course, the, um, the wise men who brought, the Magi who brought the gifts to the Christ child. And his contribution if you will, to gift giving or secret gift giving was a story. And again, there's really no proof of any of these, but the stories are so beautiful. So the story is that there was a man who had, had been wealthy, but then had lost his money and giving it and trying to help people. And so he had three daughters. And because he had, did not have enough money to provide a dowry for the three daughters, they had no other income. And so it was possible, and, you know, they, they didn't have enough dowry to make a, a good marriage. And so they probably would have wound up in prostitution. And Nicholas, in secret, came for three, three times. And the legend is that he came the first night and he threw a bag of gold in at the window. And that allowed the oldest daughter that was her dowry and that allowed her to get married. And so a while after she was married, he came a second time in secret and threw a bag of gold in the window and that allowed the dowry for the second daughter. Well, by now the father's getting kind of suspicious. And so he kept a lookout and kept a watch after the second daughter was married. And finally he caught St. Nicholas in the act of coming the third time and throwing the gold in the window for the third daughter's dowry. And so um, I actually, the way I originally heard the story was that St. Nicholas came the three times, but the father never caught him. And so as I was doing the research this time, um, the, there is a version of the legend where the father caught St. Nicholas in the act and asked for his blessing. So I just think that makes just a, a charming little addition to that story. How he became the patron saint of children and brewers is not quite so charming. This one started as a legend 
that during a time of famine, there was an evil butcher who abducted three children, murdered them, pickled them, and was in the process of them becoming ham. And um, so, but St. Nicholas found out about this and he restored the children to life. And so, now, the story itself, which to our modern sensibilities is absolutely horrible, was very popular in medieval times. It's so popular that in many stained glass windows in churches, you'll see St. Nicholas standing with, uh, in front of a barrel with three naked children in it. Well, by that time, by the, you know, in time, the story faded and people had forgotten what this original story was. And so they thought, oh, well, because they're children, he must be the patron saint of children. And since he's also, you know, depicted many times with a, you know, in front of a barrel, um, gosh, he must be the patron saint of brewers. So there you go. Kind of a strange way of getting to be the patron saint of those. Because he was uh, born in and lived near the seaports and near the coast, he became the patron saint of sailors. Why? Well, again, this is all legend. There's no proof of any of this. But that he was traveling to the Holy Land and the boat was, that he was traveling on was in, came up against a storm and was in danger of sinking and he calmed the storm. And so he became the patron saint of sailors. There's so many more stories about St. Nicholas that I would be here forever telling the stories. But um, I think there's only, let me see, oh, just a few other things. Some things that we do sort of know about him. And here's the problem. There are no contemporary accounts of his life that have been preserved to us. The nearest account that has been preserved to us was actually written some 300 years after his death. And so that kind of calls into question all of the legends. What gives the, this account a certain amount of veracity is that it is not like a lot of common accounts of the lives of saints. And so the feeling is that the man who wrote it possibly drew upon either oral or written traditions which have not been handed down to us. And so there is some indication that um, what he wrote actually had some basis in reality. Um, St. Nicholas was made the Bishop of Myra and during the time of the Emperor Diocletian, the Roman Emperor Diocletian, and here's another reason why we have so little factual, like we can prove it, knowledge of anything that went on in that era, because it was such a time of major upset. This is the time when Rome was in the process of falling. Uh, Diocletian was not the easiest guy to get along with. There was a great deal of persecution, especially of Christians, during his time, during his reign. And everything was just so in a huge state of flux that very little of what happened during that time period actually made it to us, that we really know what happened. But um, he was probably persecuted during the time of Diocletian, but he was released. He died a natural death. He was not martyred, as far as we know. And I think that pretty, oh, and there's one other, could you call it a legend? or a semi-documented fact, and that was, was St. Nicholas present at the Council of Nicaea? In some lists, longer lists of the people who attended, his name did appear. In the shorter lists, his name did not appear. So one of two things probably happened. Either he didn't attend and people at the time thought, oh golly, well he should have, let me just add his name. Or the reverse, he did attend, but he wasn't a major part of it, and so he wasn't included in some of the lists. It's your choice. None of us know. Not for sure. But anyway, so let us remember Saint Nicholas today, and let's remember his generosity, um, his helping the poor, and, and children.
So let's get started then now on page 75. Oh, and by the way, of course, this being a minor feast day, we won't have any special readings or anything, but we do have a special collect for St. Nicholas. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. And on page 82, let's say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. So our psalm for today, we actually have two psalms today. Psalms 16 and 17, and that begins on page 599. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me 
under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed their heart to pity, and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard, and now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand from those whose portion in life is this world, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our readings. We're continuing again with uh, St. Paul's letter, first letter to the Thessalonians. We're going to begin chapter 4 with verse 1 and go through verse 12. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each one of you know how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one wrong or exploit a brother or sister in this matter. Because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, just as we have already told you beforehand, and solemnly warned you. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever rejects this rejects not human authority, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now, concerning the love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anyone write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands, as we directed you, so that you may behave properly toward outsiders and be dependent on no one. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our first canticle for today is the second song of Isaiah on page 86. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our Gospel reading for today. In the Gospel of St. Luke, we're going to finish chapter 20 and go into chapter 21. So we're going to begin with chapter 20, verse 41, and go through chapter 21, verse 4. And this, the very end of this, the, the, the beginning part of chapter 21 is just, I know I say all stories are so beautiful, but this, really, this is a really truly beautiful story. And then Jesus said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David thus calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? In the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes 
who like to walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers, but they will receive the greater condemnation. Then Jesus looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second canticle for today is a song to the Lamb on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. And on page 96, let's say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And on page 97, let's say suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our collect for today, or rather our first collect for today, is the collect for the first Sunday in Advent on page 211. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra. Grant, Almighty God, that your church may be so inspired by the example of your servant Nicholas of Myra, that it may never cease to work for the welfare of children, the safety of sailors, the relief of the poor, and the help of those tossed by tempests of doubt or grief. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. And then back to page 99. Let's say the Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And on page 101, our prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And on page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, let's take a few moments for reflection. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the Church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. 